What's the deal, my familiar? You know what it is, the Don Tony Teflon, and I'm back at you another one. And don't drink and get in the faraway tree. You know we had to be drinking to do something like that. We're going to break down the episode, and I'm going to give you everything you're missing, all of the detail that you might not have picked up on. If you're into videos like that, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, 500 is the like goal. Let's get there, and let's start. We pick up where we left off last episode, Boyd and the boys are now bringing Randall into the house and you can see the damage that was left on his face by these monsters. They just clawed his whole face off, they try to get him back together but when Randall comes through, he sees Boyd and he tells him, you left me, you left me out there, which everybody in the crowd seems to be stunned at because Boyd must not have told them what he did. We pick up the next day at the clinic, Boyd sees Kenny, Christy, and Jade, they're carrying Christy in because her foot was in the bed trap he helps them inside after he helps them all inside and she goes to get tended by her girlfriend jade asks why is the ambulance here he tells them that tabitha comes back jade can't believe it that tabitha comes back and i think that there's a lot more going on with this ambulance and i will talk about that in a second but as soon as he tells jade that tabitha came back jade just drops his bag and he takes off for tabitha now my sister told me that all ambulances nowadays come standard with ultrasounds. For that fact, I think that this may come into play later when dealing with Fatima's baby. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section. We moved to Colony House where Donna is talking to Henry. Henry's not feeling that good about himself. He doesn't think that he looks the part. He thinks that he's all bummy and stuff and that he wants to get hooked up because he hasn't seen his son in such a long time. He doesn't want his son looking at him like the alcohol that he's become. So Donna agrees to take him upstairs and get him some new clubs, try to freshen him up a bit before Victor gets back. And then we see Victor coming back from their adventure of the night in the tent and we figured out who Jasper was and how important Jasper was but when he gets back he realizes that stuff is wrong they tell him that it's a bad night well it's Tilly who says it directly I know a lot of y'all have a lot of hatred for Tilly I know a lot of y'all think Tilly is the mole I know other people think Tilly is the witch we shall find out later on but when Donna sees Victor she pulls him to the side to let him know that hey it may sound unbelievable but your father just happens to be here this is something that victor can't handle so he runs outside and sarah is there to the rescue i told you who i thought sarah was and i'm sticking to that theory watch it happen next up is brunch at the matthews and we see tabitha finally home finally with her family and they start talking to her about her situation and what she went through while she was on the outside she does let them know that she did speak to their grandmother and she asked her how things are and she's basically trying to tell them that everything is the same way that we left it but it was weird for her to go out there because she really didn't come back with any information because she was taken back before that happens after this we see jay come in there and as soon as he comes in there jim's got to go on with the tough guy road again and try to kick him out but Tabitha's no let him stay Jay wants to know details of what happened how it happened and she tells him about the faraway tree and how the faraway tree is what got her out there through the lighthouse says she went through the faraway tree and that took her to the lighthouse and that's how she got out Ethan then says that he knew all about the faraway trees which shows you how much information these people basically share with each other because Jade had no idea that Ethan knew he was talking about and Jim tries to calm it down because he wants to go right to the faraway tree right now but they have to do the town hall and when you look at Jim Jim always is messing things up getting in the way of them figuring out exactly what's going on here if it's not Jim's idea Jim does not want the idea to happen and if you go back through the show and look at this I promise you you'll see it every time Jim is always in the way always not believing and real quick, if you want to support the Don Tony Teflon, please go to Amazon. I just put out my first novel. It's a psychological thriller available on Amazon. It's called Darkest Before the Dawn. I humbly ask you to go out there, pick up a copy, and let me know what you think about it. The link will be in the description and pinned in the comments. Thank you so much. Back in the clinic, we see Randall still in pain. Kenny asks Boyd, why does he think 
that the monsters allowed him to live. And Boyd tells him that they're living in a fairy tale land where they believe that anything that they do, it's all good, but the monsters want them to remember that, hey, even in the daytime, you're not safe, which to me means they need to get aggressive, they need to start pursuing the monsters, they need to get on the offensive. We see Marielle tending to a girlfriend's foot, and then Christy tries to let her know that, hey, you did all you can do. You couldn't save this girl's life. It's not your fault. You did the best you can do. But she's still eating up. And I hope she doesn't go on a relapse because of this pain and hardship. And I think that's what Christy's afraid of. After that, she comes out to tend to Randall. And she tells Boyd it's best if he just leads. Because all he's going to do is upset Randall by him being there. Back in Colony House, Donna takes Henry to Victor's bedroom. And I really was hoping that he would see something here that would trigger some type of memory, but he doesn't really get into that. I think what happens here is he starts to realize that his son has mental trauma. He starts realizing that his son is still playing with crayons, even though his son's 50-something years old. He sees the escape rope that hangs in Victor's window, and then he sees a picture of what appears to be a ghost-like figure. Let me know in the comment what you think this figure is after that he sees the crayons that victor's still playing with and donna tries to let him know that hey you are with victor's needs he looks at the picture that i believe are the totems from the new village let me know what you think that picture represent and then after this tilly comes and tells donna they have to go to the meet we finally get the scene that people have been asking for since season one. That all these people would just get together and start sharing information. That's something I wanted. It seems like something the whole fandom wanted. But I didn't want it with all these people. Because people like Dale and other people that are in here, they just mess up everything. You gotta have a select group of people to have a conversation with about this so when tabitha does get there with jen all they do is start grilling her asking her questions about what happens and she tries to answer them the best way she can we transition to julie eye patch being late to the meeting she's sneaking into colony house knowing that everybody is out the meeting she makes her way upstairs into fatima's room and then they show a flashback of her and fatima when i see flashbacks like this makes me think Fatima is not going to make it let me know in the comment what you think will Fatima make it or is she going to die this season I think she is we see her then rummaging through the drawers and when she does this she finds some marijuana some good buds of marijuana if I may say so myself that she finds in there she goes downstairs Elgin is just creeping around scared of this kimono lady almost swings and hits Julie Luckily, he doesn't, and then he apologizes to her for what he was doing. Victor is outside with Sarah, and I have told you this before, that I made up this theory that Sarah is Eloise. And I know a lot of people think that, hey, she's too old. If Eloise is dead, then Sarah is Eloise. Sarah's soul, I should say, is inside Eloise. I take that to the bank. I'm telling you, that's the way I feel. Only if Eloise is dead. If somehow she's alive, I believe she'll be at that cabin. But if she's not at that cabin, I'm telling you, this is some type of soul swap between Sarah and Victor. And you can just see the way these two have bonded. You could see the way they interact with each other. That this is a brother-sister situation going on here. I promise you, that's what I'm seeing. You let me know in the comment section what you think. We then see Julie and Elgin getting high, and Julie finally opens up about her experience when she was screaming. And she says it's not just the fact that she was screaming, it's the fact that she could feel what was going on. Now, what I think was going on that she was able to see were these monsters being created. I think when Randall says there's worse things than death, I think it's becoming one of those monsters. And I think that the fact that she could feel it means that Julie could be on the chopping block of becoming one of those monsters. After that, we get back to the town meeting again. This is the reason why 
I can't believe that they have town meetings. I never want to see them do it again because when you have these meetings and you don't have the right people in them, you get knuckleheads just screaming all type of stuff, not making sense, not listening to the details about the faraway tree because they start saying, well, show us to the tree. And then Bata and them start telling them, well, we should all be lining up to go into the tree one at a time, but you're not listening to details. And why is Tilly always around Fatima? Have y'all noticed that too? Tilly's always around it and all the pictures and everything else. I don't know why. But then after this, Tabitha tries to explain to him everything, but they just don't want to hear it. So that makes her leave. And then Boyd tries to calm them down and say, listen, the fact is she did get out. So we know that there's a way out. But again, people just don't want to listen to details. They want to jump to conclusions. There's no way anybody in their right mind would believe the story that they would have to tell to try to save anybody in here they will lock you up and put you in a mental ward and dale we could see what's gonna happen to you coming because he was the most vocal out of everybody jade is watching ethan in the matthews home tabitha comes back from the meeting and she wants to go out to the faraway tree because she feels she let everybody down and once again we have jen the most unsupportive husband in all of Frumville. He never takes a side. He never has a back. He only wants to do things that he wants to do. He tries to guilt her into staying by laying the line about the kids thinking she was dead. But she knows that this is more important and that's why she goes. But then he says, oh, you can't take Ethan with you. And he's just, I can't stand Jim. I really can't. But Tabitha then does decide to leave Ethan there and go off with Jim. Boy, has no choice but to check Ellis for his actions at the meeting because he doesn't understand what being a leader is all about. What are you going to do? You're going to sacrifice some of these people? Who are you going to sacrifice? And when you get a powder keg like this, only bad things can happen. After that, we see the basement scene with Elgin and Julie and they find the box and all these things in this basement look like the exact same things that we've seen in the cage on the monster I'll go into more detail about that in my next video I promise but they find a lot of 80s clothing and while they're looking at that they find themselves an old Polaroid camera and start shooting pictures of each other I think now that Elgin could find out if this chick is real or not because he could take a picture of her talking about the kimono monster. Is she just in his head or is she real? Maybe he could snap a picture at her. After this, we see my girl Acosta who shot a Don out and I give a prop to that 100%. Got nothing but love for her. She's trying to talk boy into allowing people to have something to do because when people don't have stuff to do they don't know how to keep busy they're going to try to do things on their own but boy at this particular time doesn't want to hear it he's not listening to reason and he knows by the end of the conversation when you see that it's over that he should be listening to her but at this particular time he's not and I think that comes back to bite boy later in the episode after this Fatima is chowing down on some more dead food and finally she gets bagged up by somebody who isn't Tilly I thought Tilly was gonna walk through that door it's always Tilly but this wasn't Tilly Ellis comes in there he's trying to cope with her like baby please just tell me what's going on pretty hard to tell him what's going on but she does tell him that she's eating all of this rotting food she doesn't tell him about the blood she doesn't say hey I just drink a girl's blood but she does tell him about the food so I guess that's kind of a start right after this we see Ethan walking with Victor's dad and him explaining to him exactly how Victor is now and how him and Victor are best friends and you know we knew that we were going to get a reunion and I've been disappointed by reunion things all the time many a times I've been disappointed Game of Thrones reunions did not work out we knew we were going to get this reunion I had high hopes for this reunion and let me tell you that they did not disappoint me I'm not crying, you're crying, right? I'm too thuggish for that. But Scott McCord acting in here, him just saying that I couldn't find my way home, just touching and heartbreaking in itself. 
After that, we see Boyd on the bus with Batuma, and I think that this is just going to foreshadow Boyd trying to catch one of these nightmare creatures on the bus. Jade and Tabitha are at the faraway tree, and Jade explains to her, I seen the symbol, I also seen the Ankui children, and I seen them laid out there on slabs. He tries to explain to her that the strips inside of the bottles he thinks are dates, which I think all of us believe that they were dates too, but one of the dates is all the way in the future. So that kind of throws his theory off, which that date could be an address, not a date. But while they're over there talking about everything, dealing with the problem, the faraway tree, here comes good old Dale. Just strolling, just taking a stroll with a little knapsacky. He takes a stroll out there, not listening to people. Says, oh, this is the magical faraway tree. And the fact that they called the tree magical makes me believe and know that it's not magical. But Dale decides to get in the tree. And after Dale gets in the tree, we see Boyd and Dale is stuck in the pool. This is what happens when you don't listen and you don't take things into consequence and you just go off on your own and do things like this but if you want to talk to the actor who plays Dale Robert Sanders he'll be on my channel tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern if you're a member or subscriber you will have the ability to call up and ask him a question ask him Dale what were you thinking bro what were you thinking but that's the episode let me know what you think about this in the comments section another great episode they knocked it out the park again and fortunately boy did not have to kill this man because the all the rocks that were inside of his body eventually suffocate him feel bad for donna elizabeth saunders the actor who was in real life married to the actor who plays Dale. But if you were a fan of Teflon TV and you see me interview her in season one, we broke that information all the way back in season one. But again, you tell me what you think in the comments. If you like the way I do this, please thumbs up this, spread this across the realm, and of course, subscribe. And until next time, you know who it is. Peace and stay sexy.